Hey you guys, it's Amy Gretchen. Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be working on a layout using Allie Edwards April Digital Kit. So what you're seeing me do right now, I'm really just jumping right into this layout, is the digital file, there was a digital file that had a quote and it says, many things are good, many things are important, uh, but only a few are essential. And I really loved this quote and it really became the basis of I guess the journaling or the story that I wanted to tell for this spread. And as I was considering how I wanted to add this quote to my spread, like I said, it was a four by six card. So I could have just added it, you know, right into one of the page protectors, but I thought that it would be really cool to make it bigger. It's awesome with digital files that you can make things as large as you want to make it bigger and really stand out by cutting it out of the silhouette. So that is what you're seeing me do. It's already cut out and I'm just now pulling it away from the negative space and now pulling it out of the carrier sheet. But right now I'm gonna jump onto my computer and show you how I isolated this quote and then took it to my silhouette so I could cut it out. All right, you guys, so I've got this file open. Like I said, this was the quote that came from the digital file. And I want to isolate this quote. Uh, there's a couple things I'm going to need to do because this is a four by six. I'm going to need to make it bigger because I want it to be on a six by eight piece of paper. So I definitely want it to be a lot larger. But before I do that, I definitely want to um, isolate this quote. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my layers palette and I want to make sure that I have unlocked this layer so that I'm able to make adjustments to it. Then I'm going to come over here and grab my magic wand tool. Now keep in mind, I'm using Photoshop and this is the latest version of Photoshop. So if you're using any other version of Photoshop or maybe Photoshop elements, I know that they have a magic wand tool. So I apologize. I may not have the exact same steps, but I know that it, is pretty similar. So what I want to do is I want to just highlight right onto the pink and that's the background. You can see that I'm missing some things here and that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and hit delete there and you can see that now it's deleting all of um, that background there. Now I'm going to hit control or command D just so I can get rid of those marching ants so I can see it for a minute. So the one thing that I'm gonna need to do now is I'm gonna need to go and I'm gonna hit Control Plus just so I can see it a little bit better. And I'm gonna hold down the Shift key so that I get this hand so I can move the file around. And um, I wanna isolate, I need to go in between these letters and then I obviously need to get into these spaces that were blocked off because of the lines. So in order to do that and just do it all at once, I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm just gonna keep clicking on areas that I want to delete. Now, if I make a mistake like I just did right then, I'm just gonna hit Control Z and I'm gonna be able to undo that. And then it's gonna take me back to where I was. So some of these are a little bit trickier or a little bit smaller. And if you need to zoom in, you absolutely can do that. So far, I think I'll be okay. But yeah, some of these are pretty small. And you're just gonna keep going until you get all of that light pink. Now I'm gonna hit shift and move up now that I've got the hand. Again, hit, I'm sorry, this was the space key. It's the space key to get the hand, not shift. I apologize for that. I said that wrong earlier. So I'm gonna hit the space key to get the hand. Now I'm hitting shift again so that I can continue grabbing all the light pink. I do apologize for misspeaking. Sometimes it's hard to record and be working on this all at the same time. So I think I got uh, all of the pink there. So I'm gonna hit delete again, or you could probably hit backspace as well. And now I've noticed that I missed some. So I'm just gonna click right on there, shift click again, because I missed another one. I'll delete that. Now I'm in a uh, control or command minus. And I think I got it all. Now, because this is really small, um, 
This is just going to be way too small to go through my uh, machine and to be able to actually cut decent. So um, I'm not going to worry about getting the insides um, of those letters there. Why don't I just go ahead and delete that just to get it out of the way. So I'm going to do Control or Command D to deselect that. And now I'm going to come over to my Erase tool. And then I'm just going to erase that right there. All right. Now I want to make this file a little bit bigger. I think I could probably save it and make it bigger in my silhouette. So let's try that. I do want to just let you guys know that I am not a silhouette guru and I'm just going to name this vertical three and I definitely do not want to keep it the same file as Allie's or it will um, go over her file and I don't want to er, er, change this file at all. So I'm going to save it as a copy and then I'm just going to click save and then OK. All right, you guys, as my silhouette is opening up and I'm just going to move it over here to my window so you guys can see it. I just want to let you know I've only played with this software a handful of times, so I'm not a guru. I know how to do very simple things, so I'm really hoping that I'll be able to. If you have any questions, hopefully I can help you. If not, we can try and find the answer together. So I want to open the file that I just created and it's right here. So just look for it where you saved it at. And I'm clicking OK. Now, the one thing about this file is it's a little too small. When I'm clicking on it, you can see that it's a six by four. That was the original size. And I actually want it to be a uh, six by eight. So keep that in mind. We want to make this a little bit bigger. So you want to make sure that this lock is actually locked. So when I play with the ratio, it will stay the exact same and it won't like mess with um, it won't mess with the proportions. So I'm gonna change the width to a six, and when I hit tab, it should go to a nine, because that was the same ratio. And this should change. Hit enter, there we go, hit enter. And then it's going to turn this into a six by nine. Now, if I wanted to make this so it stretched all the way across, and this was more six inches, then you would just need to make it a little bit bigger. You could also just drag the corner here and you could make this file a little bit bigger. But I actually want it to be um, six inches there. I kind of want it to be able, you know, I want there to be some, some negative space there on the outside, or I guess I should say some white space. So now what I need to do is I need to create the cut lines. So now that I've got the size that I want, I'm going to come over here to the trace panel. So this looks a little bit like a butterfly. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to hit select trace area. And then I'm just going to come over the area that I want to um, trace and I'm going to go to this solid fill and I'm just going to start moving the threshold up until you can start seeing the yellow. And I don't think I want to go all the way because it makes it a little bit too thick, but I want to go pretty high. I don't want to lose some of the dimension, you know, in some of um, the letters here. So I'm just going to mess with it until I see that I like it. And I'm looking at the lines also to make sure that I'm getting some decent lines there. And that looks good to me. So now I'm going to hit trace and you can see as I pull over, um, Actually, I meant to pull, I'm gonna hit Control Z. I meant to pull over the quote, but as I pull over the actual quote, now I am left with my cut lines. So this is actually what is going to cut from the silhouette. I can just leave this off to the side here. It's not important that they're together. And now I'm just gonna come up here to send, and I'm actually just going to send this off to my silhouette. I wanna make sure that I'm I'm going to be doing this on cardstock and then putting it on vellum. So I want to do heavy weight, so 80 pound, and I'm going to need to change, um, probably change this right here to a four or a three or a four would probably work depending on uh, your blade. And you can see that my silhouette's actually not powered on right now, but I will go ahead and do that and then I'll just go ahead and send that to cut. All right, you guys, so jumping back on here, you can see that I'm still just trying to take off pieces from the quote from my carrier sheet. So I really hope seeing how I isolated this quote and sent it to my silhouette was helpful. If you are 
wanting to see or are curious about seeing more of how I work with these digital files, please let me know in the comment section below and I will do my best to include them um, when I use them um, in my videos. So like I said, I am just trying to get all of the pieces and I want to remind you to make sure you get like the tittle on the, the eye and things like that. And then there were a couple pieces that just didn't come out on their own from some of the inside of the letters. So I just wanted to make sure and pull some of those out. I actually used my exacto to do that because it was a, a lot easier to do so. So now I'm just going to set my um, quote aside. You saw that I had a vellum piece of paper there and I just cut it to be the exact size of the page protector. So that is definitely more than a six by eight. Um, I can get the exact measurements for you, but just measure your page protector and then just cut the, or the vellum exactly that color, or excuse me, size. And I did my journaling in Photoshop and I'm gonna just put the date on the bottom for this because I actually printed it off with photo paper. It's a little bit slicker. I'm just gonna be stamping the date that I wrote the journaling um, right onto the paper with stays on ink. You can see, uh, maybe you can't see, but that photo is actually from 2009, so it's older, but I love being able to tell some of these stories with some of my older images. That file that I'm showing you right now and I'm attempting to get um, focused, it says keep it simple and that is actually another digital file. It's one of the chipboard circles that came in this kit. So I just cut it out the size that it was intended and then adhered it right on to the photo. I felt like this spread needed a little bit something, so I wanted to add that. And then I also wanted to try and find another little embellishment piece to put with it. So I pulled over my stash that just has a lot of leftover embellishments from Ali Edwards and also some other kits that I have acquired over time. So I'm looking at some stars or some hearts, just something little that I think would go. I found these stars and dots that I think came from a Studio Calico kit and it had a green one that I was thinking of doing, but I thought the green was too matchy matchy with the life on purpose. And so I decided to uh, go with the orange because I thought that they would complement each other in the spread. And then I would have a little bit more color since my photo is black and white as well. And then I am just adding the holes using the page protector as my guide. So adding those holes um, onto the vellum and I, the vellum does slide around quite a bit. So my advice for you, if you're, if you're ever doing something like this with a material like that is maybe to get those um, alligator clips and clip it on so it will help it so it's not shifting and moving around on you. So I was trying to consider where to add the date of the photo because clearly the date of the photo is very different from the date of the journaling. So what I have done in the past in a lot of my scrapbooking, way back in the day when I was scrapbooking, more layouts is on the back of the layout, I would write the date that I wrote the journaling and then I would write the date that I took the photo and then I would write a little kind of a little extra love note or a little extra something to it. And so I wanted to do that with this photo as well. I wanted to add the actual date just right onto the back of the photo since I have the date of the journaling. So for the last piece of this layout, I'm gonna be adhering the quote right onto the vellum. So because it is vellum, I knew that I had to really think about how I wanted to adhere it on because it is gonna show up in the background. So the first thing I did is I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna use my dot rolling adhesive, but when I started putting it on, I realized it was blue and that will definitely show up behind the vellum. And then I tried to use the smaller version because it's clear, but then I just wasn't able to get some of the smaller areas. And so because the vellum is not going to be in a page protector, it's just gonna be on the outside, I wanted it to be adhered very well. So I grabbed over my adhesive, this is, Tombow Mono Liquid Adhesive, and it works really great and it um, dries clear, but it is possible that I'll be able to see a little bit um, from the vellum on the backside, but I've just decided that I'm not gonna worry about it and it's not going to be a big deal. So you can see that I'm just putting little dots of the vellum onto all the little pieces. I'm. It's not like on every single spot, but it's definitely around as much as possible and then getting on to also the those lines as well, just so I make sure that they are adhered down um, as 
best as possible. And now I'm going to do my best to get this file centered onto my vellum the best possible. I know it's not like perfect, but it will definitely work for me. The one thing that I thought was a little bit tricky was just those, the lines underneath, because they are a lot thinner, I definitely had to be careful about the way I put them down. And you can also see that there were some, so two of the R's and then the A, they were not connected to the lines or anything else, so they're just kind of hovering. So I'm gonna have to adhere those separately as well. And I'm trying to figure out which R goes in which place. So I think the bigger R goes next to the good there. So I kind of had to look at the file again to see which one went where. So then I'm just doing that separately and I'll probably use the tweezers to help me with that. Like I've said in the past, it's always a lot easier to use tweezers to keep your hands out of the way. But you guys, I really love the way this looked. I love that it became like an opener for my page. I love that it really worked with my journaling. And I really love how the silhouette cut this out with the lines. It was just a really fun file to play with. So, so I hope you guys will begin to start looking at your digital files a little bit differently and use them with your silhouette. Play around so you can really get some fun, creative looks. Anyway, you guys, I am done with this spread. So I wanted to show you how it all looks together in the album. So I'm just gonna pull over my six by eight album so you can see how it all fits together. One of the things that I was really happy about is this quote goes really great with the photo that goes next to it as well. So not only is it an opener for that, but I thought it went really well with that home page that I had done. Anyway, you guys, I am finished. Thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And like I said, if it has anything to do with the silhouette, I will do my best to help walk you through it. All right, you guys, we will catch you in the next one. Bye.